And I call the member for Greenland. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I uh, think it is appropriate that this parliament uh, pay tribute to a great Australian in Richie Benno. Is there any other sports commentator in the world who is so much of a cult figure that literally hundreds of grown men are prepared to don white wigs and cream-coloured suits in an annual fancy dress party to pay tribute. I doubt it. But once a year at the test at the Sydney Cricket Ground, uh, hundreds of cricket fans dress up as Richie Benno. I noticed uh, during uh, this year's test, not just men. And it doesn't matter if the temperature is 40 degrees. They're there all day, the Richies, paying homage to a man who became a familiar and a very welcome presence in their lives and in the lives of millions of people around the world over a period of more than six decades. I suspect uh, there's something very Australian about the Richies presence at the SCG and next year uh, I think it will break the record for the number of riches, as I'm sure uh, even more people uh, pay tribute uh, to this great Australian. So much has been said about the death of Richie Benno that it's hard to break new ground in any tribute to his remarkable life. But to me, the key word that comes to mind when I think of this great sportsman and journalist is integrity. Integrity as a bowler and a batsman. Integrity as a captain who led his team with an intense fighting spirit, but never forgot to treat his opponents with courtesy. And later, absolute integrity as a journalist and commentator. It's often difficult to explain to uh, visitors uh, to our great land uh, how people can sit and watch every ball of a game that goes for five days uh, without potentially getting a result. But uh, what uh, cricket is about isn't just what is written down, it's what is unwritten. The uh, culture of sportsmanship that someone like Richie Benno embodied, a man who would never have claimed a catch that he knew hadn't been taken a man who played absolutely within the spirit of the game and embodied it as a sport. A contest, yes, but a sport that was about uh, relationships and bridging uh, those relationships for, between uh, all countries who play that great sport. What made Richie Benno stand out was his understanding that while winning was important, what was more important was the way that you played the game. After his death last month, many people described him as the voice of the Australian summer. But the truth is he was the voice of world cricket, a man known as widely in other cricket playing countries as he was in Australia. He was also the voice of English summer, which is remarkable, broadcasting every year regardless of whether Australia was playing or not. Uh, he loved cricket. But he refused to affect that, uh, let that affect his commentary as an Australian. He was above all a cricket enthusiast. He was as generous about the great batting of Tendulkar or performances by Botham or Viv Richards as he was about Mark Waugh or Alan Border or Dennis Lilly. He was happy to offer criticism where it was warranted. When Greg Chap Chappell ordered his brother Trevor to bowl underarm against New Zealand in 1981, he had no hesitation in condemning the decision. Whoever was playing, you always felt that Richie was commentating. His key concern was you, the listener. He didn't see his job as barracking for any particular team. His concern was to use his special knowledge and experience to help people understand and enjoy cricket. Much loved, ABC commentator Jim Maxwell perhaps put it best when he described Richie as cricket's pope. He was indeed a gentleman who I had the honour of meeting uh, on a number of occasions. His uh, knowledge, his authenticity 
and his genuineness just shone through. So I'll miss hearing that voice. Uh, he was very much a part of our lives. He played 63 tests for Australia, was the first player to score 2,000 test runs and take 200 wickets. As Australian captain, he never lost a series. As a commentator, he had no peer. Recently, I was listening to an ABC radio documentary about the 1961 West Indies tour of Australia, which of course featured the famous Tide test at the Gabba. Richie was interviewed for the program along with other greats of the area. What impressed me was the way that Richie and his opposing captain, the great Sir Frank Worrell, formed an informal pact at the beginning of the series to of course try to beat each other, but the most important thing was they were going to play to win, not just to draw. And they played an exciting brand of cricket that re-energised uh, cricket from that 1961 series on. I think that tells you everything you needed to know about Richie Benno. Just as he put his viewers first when he was in the commentary box, he put those people at the ground watching the game first when he was a player and captain. He knew, he knew that they wanted uh, to uh, be concerned about the style of the game uh, as well as the outcome at the end of a test match. And I think uh, that was uh, the secret of his greatness. Even in, in his final months as he fought the melanoma that he linked with sun exposure during his playing career, he was happy to appear publicly to urge children not to make the same mistake. His tribute to Phil Hughes was uh, quite remarkable. Uh, as uh, someone, even though he himself at the time was going through uh, illness. Uh, he never looked for sympathy. Uh, what he wanted, though, with uh, his campaign against sun cancer was to make sure that others benefited from his experience. To his family and many friends, particularly uh, his wife Daphne, who he spoke about often and so affectionately, I offer my sincere condolences. And to cricket fans uh, here and indeed everywhere throughout the world, I say we're all very lucky to have shared time on this earth with Richie Benno.